Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. For this video, I will be transforming this made-to-move Barbie into Raja from Season 3 of RuPaul's Drag Race. So the look I want to make of Raja is her Marie Antoinette look. I love, love, love Rococo fashion. I love Marie Antoinette. I love the history, the exuberance, the elegance of everything. And I just thought it would be so perfect to make this. And I love Raja's take on it as well. I was really obsessed the first time I saw this on the runway when she wore it in season 3. And I just know that I had to pay tribute by making a doll out of this look. That being said, let's go ahead and get started. So for Raja's wig, I'm actually using this off-white yarn that I got, I believe, from Walmart. And as you can see, like I said, it is off-white. I really wanted the powdered wig look, so I tried my best to find a color that would kind of match that. The first ones that I attempted were like either really white or really blonde or they were streaky. So this one was a good color for the effect that we're trying to achieve. Currently, as you can see, I am straightening the wefts just so that it's easier to handle. But if you want more in-depth tutorials on how to make the wefts, I will put some links down below. And also you guys should check out Mozikito because she does amazing wigs. Then onto the wig cap, I take a styro ball in shape of an egg actually and I just cut it in half or I guess peel it in half and I glue it on top of the wig cap. This will help us achieve the beehive kind of look without adding too much hair. It's just an easier way to achieve the look. And then we take our wefts and I glue some wefts underneath the wig cap so we can actually flip it over and I'm also gluing some wefts in the perimeter of the entire wig cap. I curl the hair in the back first, just so that when we actually flip the front hair, it's a cleaner transition and it doesn't look really funky from the front. And I'm just using my heated metal chopstick to curl everything. I separate the curls just to make them fuller and so we can cover more space. And then I glue them up and then flip the excess down. And then we do the same exact thing for the front. I curl everything first with my heated metal chopstick and I separate all of the curls and then we just glue it on top and we cover everything in the back. This creates a better transition and it's starting to look like a Rococo Marie Antoinette look. And then for the side curls, I just add three wefts onto the side and I curl them to her head and I just glue it in place. For some reason, this was my favorite part. Well, it's one of my favorite parts when I was making this wig. It was just so cool seeing all the curls. It was very classic looking. It's very old timey. I don't know. It was just really, really fun for me. And then we will be adding flowers. It is not a Rococo Marie Antoinette hairstyle if it doesn't have embellishments. It's all about the accessories, the glamour, the bigger the hair, the better. And as you can see, we're painting the roses gold. We're painting the roses gold. I just wanted the antique look, so we are painting the roses gold. And then just to add more foliage and green into the hair, I'm just going to be adding these leaves with the roses. Then I'll just be taking these micro pearls and beads and we will just hang it around the wig. So for the main styling of the ornaments, I just went off of what Raja wore on the runway and I think this is how she had her hair. Kind of just had fun with this as well. If you guys want to recreate this look or a Rococo kind of hairstyle, you can go look up images online for more Rococo hairstyles or more Marie Antoinette ones. Just be creative with it and have fun! I realized that the pink roses still did not match the look that I was trying to go for, so I went ahead and painted some of the roses a mauve kind of color. 
Now let's move on to the face. I am going to be using a made to move Barbie and I believe this is the peach top or orange top. And as usual, we will be taking her factory paint off with acetone or nail polish remover. After spraying her face with MSC, I go ahead with my white acrylic paint and I just paint over her face. And we will do the neck later, but we are trying to achieve a clown white powdered look for Raja. Then I take my watercolor pencils and I start mapping out the features. Her makeup here isn't really drastic per se because her eyeliner isn't that much, eyeshadow is very muted, but I wanted her makeup to be more dramatic and more in contrast to each other, so I really brought out the pinks and the yellows of her face. Even though her face is literally clown white, we still have to contour her nose and give her the cheekbones that she deserves. And then it's time for the rouge. For this part, you kind of have to make it a little more dramatic and it's not really like blended per se. And this literally brought out the Rococo look and I was really, really excited about that. So for Raja's makeup, she actually had a smoky eye. Her interpretation for this makeup was a little more dramatic. It's a little more high fashion. It's more of a runway type of makeup. So it was dramatic. It wasn't really realistic to the historical type of makeup that they used to wear. So I thought that was really, really cool that she made it contemporary. Raja's eyeliner wasn't really that strong. It was actually kind of smoky and it was more faint, but because I like my eyeliners to be very sharp and more edgy, I went ahead and gave her a cut crease with the black and I gave her lids a pink hue. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I actually changed her eyebrows, I think four times in this video. I changed it from gray to brown to pink and now to white. I just like couldn't decide, but I think the white was closer to Raja's makeup. I'm just rendering her eyes a little more just to add more details. And then we will be adding the catch lights for the reflection and we're almost done. Well, with her face. <laughs> And then let's go add her heart beauty mark onto her cheeks. So like I said, we're also going to be powdering her neck. I love how this blended and I was actually amazed that I was able to kind of make it look powdery just by using acrylic paint. So that was really, really cool. I thought this look was so dainty and it's so nice. It actually kind of reminded me of like geishas from Japan, how they would paint their faces, neck, and also their hands white as well. So it was kind of cool. Then I'll be taking these lashes and we will glue it onto her face. And we're also going to be trimming them because they are so long. And to finish it off, we will be adding another black heart onto her neck because for some reason, Raja had two beauty marks. <laughs> Moving on to the outfit. So it was very hard to find the same exact fabric that she used in doll scale. So I had to order t-shirts with like paintings on it, like classic paintings, Renaissance paintings, any sort of type of paintings or like Baroque paintings, just to emulate the look that she had. And so I made this outfit, and as you can see, I sewed it all by myself. However, I did not like the color palette and how yellow it was. So I had to remake the entire thing, but with a different fabric. Unfortunately, I actually deleted the progress for the newer outfit. So I'm still showing you guys what I did for the older one because I did the same exact steps. It was just a different fabric. But I'll show you guys the new version, obviously, in the end.
But surprisingly, it was easier than I thought. I just had to make a corset using like the tape and foil method. And I just covered this entire thing with the fabric using glue and stuff. And then obviously for the pants, it was just quite stretchy. So it was really, really nice. Thank goodness. <laughs> So at first I had a bodice corset type of look going on, but I decided to separate the bodice just so that her joints and the made to move Barbie actually works. So this is the fabric I ended up using. It was actually one of my sweaters and it's not perfect because it's still really dark, but it's better than the other one. For me at least, it's much better. After the outfit, let's go ahead and work on her accessories. Raja actually had a pair of long velvet gloves. Um, I wasn't sure if it was navy or black. I thought it was um, navy though because it wasn't as dark. And I actually really like the navy look. So I'm just sewing this in place. It is also a very, very stretchy material, which is great. And I'm just creating a tube. For the hand part, I'm actually going to be painting it as close to the velvet fabric as possible. Obviously, it's not going to have the same texture, but I really do not like it when the gloves looks like, like mittens. It's one of my pet peeves, so this for me is pretty good. Raja actually had a big ring, so we're just going to add that as well. Raja was actually wearing a lot of necklaces, but in doll form, we can only do two sets of pearls. She also had a big tattoo on her right arm, so I'm just trying to add that. And I believe it is a girl with three sets of hands sitting on a lotus flower. And then for the shoes, I'm just taking these black pumps from Barbie, and I will be painting the back of it red. I think Raj was actually wearing Louboutins for that look, and I'm also going to be adding a black bow on top of it. For her last accessory, she actually had a fan. I couldn't really tell the design of her fan. I think it was just a plain wooden fan. So I decided to make my own. So I'm just using the fabric from the first costume that I wanted because it was more gold and yellow kind of look. And I'm just stacking it together to create the 3D look of a fan. And I'm also painting gold panels onto the fan, just for an added detail. And then let's go add pearls to finish it off. Thank you. 